At Worlds 2018, the impossible happened. By now, you've probably already heard the story. We've only made three other videos about it. The defending world champions, Gen G, lost in groups, one and five. They will slaughter Gen G! The powerhouse first seed, KT Rolster, went down in quarterfinals. KT Rolster has fallen! And the Afrika Freaks completed the trend with a 3-0 loss to Cloud9. And the last vestige of Korea has been destroyed! It's not just the first time that Korea has missed the final since they got a server. It's not just the first time that Korea didn't win Worlds since 2013. Genji didn't even make it out of quarterfinals. They only won one game. For the greatest region in the history of League of Legends, it was a disaster. So what happened? First of all, let's be clear. Koreans are still a threat in League of Legends. Worlds was not about the end of LCK as a region. For example, bad players on bad teams don't do stuff like this. All those minions will be there advantage. Teleport comes in, they're gonna fight! All right, Infernal Dragon's going incredibly low. Picked up by Team Liquid, that's the second of the game. x Smoothie gets chunked down. Let somebody heal, keeps him alive a few seconds longer. Long range, death sentence, connects up to impact, and look at the lantern. It brings KT Rolster all the way to Team Liquid. Pobelt is running for his life. Or this. Then they're just going to take him down, potentially a flank coming in here from Utel. This is that engage you might be talking about. Ring of Frost quickly onto Xmithy and Ole. Xmithy trying to get the stun onto Mata, but now he's locked up and taken down a double kill for Tap. What this tournament was about was the rest of the world catching up, producing world-class players in their own right, and maybe most importantly, the fact that much of Korea's World's 2018 contingent had a bad read on the meta. Let's start there. The World's 2018 meta was defined by aggression. I guess our trait would be proactive uh, aggression but we couldn't really show it at first and it took a lot of time. And now I think it's really coming out and we're able to show that, but also those other teams are super aggressive too. And I think that's just like the winning thing for this world is aggression. Cause if you've seen all the Korean teams, like they try to play it slow, they try to play around the vision, but then everyone just goes for the fight in darkness. Historically, Koreans have excelled in an environment where they can play a low risk style, where they can set up short things and profit from perfect, calculated play. What's more, Korean players are usually the first to find out what the best way to play is. They set the meta and the rest of the world catches up. This time though, for maybe the first real time in League of Legends history, they had the wrong idea. There were two teams in Korea who excelled in fast and aggressive games. King's Own Dragon X, the kings of the spring split who faltered in the summer, and newcomers Griffin, a team of challenger players who made it all the way to a five game LCK finals but along with Kingzone, fell to Gen G in the regional finals. So why did they lose? It's hard to pin down exactly what happened, but the simplest answer is that Gen G had a better read on the game at the time they played the gauntlet. For all intents and purposes, Korea sent a team that was most ready to face international competition. But Gen G, the defending world champions, faltered. It's the worst international performance a Korean team has ever put up. And it came in part because Gen G wasn't ready to play the game at the speed that the world's meta demanded. When people say that Korea played too slowly at Worlds 2018, they mean that Gen G did. Afrika, on the other hand, didn't look too bad in groups. Sure, they lost a few games, but they still made it out in first place. And then they got dismantled by Cloud9. But you shouldn't dismiss Afrika for being a trash team just because they lost to C9. Sure, game one was a stomp, but that's how the world's meta went. Cloud9 got a lead and they closed it out. But game two was back and forth, and let's not forget about game three. One or an auto attack on Baron was enough to change Cloud9's fate. That took pretty slim margin. Guardian Angels active on Kramer and Keen. This provides a tremendous amount of an advantage for the next team fight. Sven Skarens is still on cooldown here for Cloud9. They do not want the heart. Oh, they're going for it! Oh, what a hook by Tushin! They're gonna find the way in though. The Orange's gonna come across, and the knockups are there. Is this the fight? It's two for zero, and the Guardian Angels are popped. This could well be it! Look at him clean up the map! Of course, you have the wiggle room to make a bold play like that when you're up 2-0, but Cloud9 didn't roll Afrika in every game. Afrika were a strong team that lost in part because of a top lane matchup that everyone thought would favor Keen. 
C9 solo lanes outperformed Afrika's, and that's a pretty crazy statement on its own. The objective doesn't go down, the turret still stands, but Jensen's not done. He wants to chunk down, oh! and he does! Takes out Kramer! It's rare that an NA team can individually outperform a Korean team like that. Now, did Afrika play a little too slowly? Probably, but it's not like a meta that favored carry solo laners didn't favor Keen. Cloud9 just had a better idea of how to play the world's meta and the solo laners who could make that work for them. Which brings us to KT Rolster. KT were Korea's big hope in groups. They looked to be the only Korean team that was living up to the hype. There is a ray of sunshine in all of this. There is one ray, and that of course is KT Rolster. They are the super team that came in as the number one seed from the LCK. And of the three teams that Korea sent to Worlds, KT played the fastest. They were built as a super team, packed with carry potential. With Smeb in the top lane and a young but powerful Yukao holding down mid, KT snowballed and blew open games in Korea. But to understand how IG upset them, you really have to look at the gaps in KT's play and where IG really shone. Up until the finals, IG looked strongest in their dominant solo lanes. Jackie Love down below 100, he's taken out by Yukao. Shies into the middle of the fight, decimating Smash down to two. As Wind becomes Lightning and slays score, Yukao's gonna be dropping next. And KT are destroyed in this fight. Shy goes underneath the turret, he'll soak one more shot. Smith's gonna be taken down. A double kill over to Rookie, and IG find the near ice. The Shy commanded top so thoroughly that he made Smeb look far from the world-class carry he'd been back home. Rookie is only trying to ward off another boss. They might just dive him though. You could make that happen. The claw could come in. Smeb's not able to find himself the stun. He's gonna be bursted down nearly immediately and the Shy grabs the kill. And Rookie styled on Yukao, a player whose champion pool did favor more control-centered picks rather than the burst-heavy champions who were favored at Worlds. Now take it very low, down to zero, and first blood of the rookie. KT were also known for their strong bot lane, something that had been more important in Korea than it would prove to be at Worlds. In the end, KT were outclassed by a team that outperformed everyone's expectations. KT Rolster has fallen, and Invictus Gaming will do what has not been done since 2014. They will eliminate the Korean first seed. They made it close, but IG just played better overall. So, what does this all mean for Korea? Well, first of all, the region isn't doomed. They still have many of the best players in the world, the best infrastructure in League of Legends, and a talent pool that's always been able to produce world-class players. Rookie may have committed himself to China, but he came up in Korea, and the Shy also got his start in Korean solo queue. But for the first time ever, the players representing Korea couldn't hack it on the world stage. They went into a tournament behind on the meta and lost even skirmishes against highly mechanical players from other regions. Let's not beat around the bush here. This has never happened before. Not like this. And it's really fucking crazy. But a contingent of some of the most gifted players the game has ever seen are going back to Korea with their heads hung low, with the bitter taste of coming up short fresh in their minds. That has also never happened before. And you can bet they're gonna be back. Korea is going into 2019 hungry, with something to prove, with a crown to reclaim. And it's gonna be one hell of a show. Thanks for watching. If you want more great content just like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button.